Hello everyone. So in this tutorial today, what we are going to be covering is how to upgrade a digital ocean droplet. Now, in some ways, this may seem like a very easy topic, right? And when we actually go through and do this, you're going to see how simple it is. However, there are some things you need to keep in mind when upgrading a digital ocean droplet. And that is also very true when you're upgrading a production digital ocean droplet. So we're going to talk about best practices uh, with that later in this video. Now, if you don't know who I am, obviously my name is Timothy Bramlett. You can see that. That's the name of the channel. But I am the co-founder of Stammer AI as well as a bunch of other products that we've actually launched, some of which you can actually see behind me running live now in those terminals on that, uh, that large screen. We use DigitalOcean almost exclusively, and so we have a ton of experience using it. And I also, in the past, have a lot of experience with DevOps in general. So that's why I'm actually making this tutorial. Let's jump right into it, though. Let's go into my DigitalOcean account here, and let's see if my server from my other tutorials has booted up. And it has. I had it turned off just in case you guys had noticed the IP address in earlier videos and were trying to hit it up or something. Uh, that wouldn't be a problem. You don't have the key, but just in case, just to be careful here. So what are we going to do? Well, let's say we have a scenario where we want to upgrade this droplet. And let's say this is an easy situation. You know, this is not a production web application or it's one with so few users that we simply don't care, right? Okay, so what do we do in that scenario? Well, it's actually pretty easy to do. We just go to the resize menu and you're gonna be seeing, you're gonna see two options here, right? We've got CPU and RAM only or disk CPU and RAM. Now, this is very important, or at least I personally think it is. You only want to resize the disk when you have absolutely no other choice, right? Because in platforms like DigitalOcean, I don't know if they built this in to incentivize you never to go to a, a lesser plan or if it's literally a limitation of whatever underlying virtual machine platform they're using. But you can't downsize a disk. There's no easy way to do it. And so far, I haven't found a reliable way to do it yet. I suppose you could create a new machine and then use rsync or whatever to rsync files over, but that's obviously not going to be easy. You're going to specifically specify which, I don't believe you can rsync an entire server. At least I've never attempted to, to successfully do it. So anyway, the point is do not increase the size of the disk unless you have to. Okay, and in a moment, I will talk about what you need to do when it's a production web application, but we're gonna only increase the CPU and the RAM for this, okay? So we've got CPU and RAM selected. Now let's talk a little bit about these other options here and when something is more appropriate for another type of option because it all depends on what you wanna do, right? Okay. And the first option you're gonna see here is for a shared CPU. These are all their basic DigitalOcean droplets and all these CPUs are shared among other instances. Now, as far as I know, and I don't understand fully their execution characteristics because I don't have access to that data, but as far as I know, that means that if someone else's VM starts spiking a lot of activity on that CPU, it could affect your machine and it may not get as many compute cycles as it would if it was on a dedicated CPU. So that's imp something important to keep uh, mind of. If you've got a production web application that you know is compute sensitive as far as the operations you're doing, you need compute time, you may need to go with something that, that's general purpose in DigitalOcean is what they call it. And that reserves for you a dedicated CPU that is never accessed by another VM of someone else's account. So, then you've got you know, variations of those dedicated CPU machines, okay? We've got CPU optimized. They've done something there to where the CPUs, you get more CPUs for uh, you know, a lesser price compared to the other machines, right? And you can see here that you can get four dedicated virtual CPUs for something like $84 a month, and that's really not bad. 
Now, you've also got memory optimized. And so this all depends on the execution characteristics of your application, right? As an example, um, Notifier.so, a product of ours that we launched you know, a few years ago, it's very compute heavy, right? Not as much memory heavy. We're not loading a massive amount of data into memory with uh, Notifier. In fact, it's reading everything in real time and then it tends to keep some and then get rid of all the rest of the data, right? We're not, it's not even disk heavy, it's, it's literally just CPU heavy. And so for that type of project, I would wanna go with something that's CPU optimized, possibly. Um, now, an example of a memory heavy application is actually our current platform that we're focused on primarily, which is Stammer AI. And we have to load a lot of data in memory for our knowledge base, because in order to search that knowledge base, very, very quickly, it needs to be in memory. And then we search it and we do, a, um, we do a semantic search using the data that's stored in memory. And so that has to be very fast. That's a memory heavy uh, use case there. So that's a situation where we actually do have a memory optimized machine for Stammer, at least that part of Stammer. Stammer now has you know, a more complex architecture. So it's, it's in memory database is actually a separate instance right now. Okay, and now the final variation here is the storage optimized uh, droplets. And it's just like they sound, right? You get a larger amount of disk space. And I have, we don't have an application. Well, one time Notifier was storing all of its data that we were getting from the various platforms. And we were actually, well, we were storing those in S3 actually. So it's not quite the same thing, but I think you get the idea. If you're storing a lot of data for whatever reason on your VM's hard disk, which I would say you should try to avoid that, to be honest. You might want to use an attached volume instead of just storing it on the one volume that's the main dedicated volume for that instance. But anyway, if you have that type of use case where you're storing a lot of data on disk, this is where this would be appropriate. So keep those things in mind. We're going to go through the simple use case where we can afford to turn this off. We're just going to go for basic and we're going to go, what is this actually? Oh, this is premium. These are faster SD, uh, faster drives basically. Anyway, I can't remember where that's explained in their user interface, but I haven't seen a lot of people saying that this was actually worth it. But, you know, keep in mind, you have to test things yourself. We're going to go up to this actually. Let's do this one. Premium Intel, one virtual CPU still, one gigabyte of memory, and the price is $8 a month. So watch what's gonna happen here. I've got that selected, but I must turn off the droplet before resizing. How would we do this if it's, that's, if it's a production application? We'll go over that in just a moment, but let me just show you how simple this is. I am just gonna literally turn this off from the, uh, their management interface here. What you would actually probably wanna do is go into your, your terminal, SSH into the machine and then do sudo shutdown now. And that's usually a safer way to turn this off. I believe this actually sends the appropriate shutdown signal to the machine. And so it would shut down safely. You guys let me know in the comments if that's not the case, but that's probably the better way to do this, but I'm in a hurry. Now we're going to, we already have the new instance selected. Now we're gonna click resize. And this supposedly can take up to a minute to resize per gigabyte of hard disk space. What I've noticed is the actual behavior though is that for very small instances like this, it's very fast. For medium sized instances, it's very slow. And then for the larger size instances, it's incredibly fast. And it actually blows my mind how much, how fast some of these snapshots process and the upgrades. So something's going on there. Okay, the droplet has actually already been resized while I've been ranting, so that's great. And now, of course, we can just turn it back on. And if we were to log in, the machine would be good to go and it would be upgraded with its newer hardware. Actually, those upgrades we made, I think, affected very little, so we wouldn't see a lot of difference. Now, let's talk about what do you do when this is a production application and you can't or you don't want to turn it off. Okay, so what you need to do in that case is you need to hot swap the server. But what you will do is we will first, okay, the most important thing is you have to have a, what does DigitalOcean call it? Let's see. Let's go to networking. Uh, here is the, so you need to have a IP address assigned, a floating IP. Let me see. 
Yes, they call it reserved IP addresses. So you have to have a reserve IP address added to this. And we're going to assign one to this droplet right now. So you would want to have this in place beforehand, right? You can't, I guess you could swap it out with, with, you know, you could add one and then later on add your DNS and just let it smoothly swap over to the new IP address. But ideally set this up beforehand or do what I just described. But we're going to assign it to this droplet, DO Tutorial 2. So let's click on add a reserved IP to this droplet. And this should be working now. Keep in mind, if this was a real production web application and you haven't set this up before, what we would need to do is go into our DNS settings and change it from that old IP address to this new IP address that's been reserved for this machine. Okay, so now that we have that in place, the reserved IP address, let's go back to the tutorials project inside this DigitalOcean account. And let's see if that's interesting. That usually shows as a reserved IP address being assigned to that droplet. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Did I not do the right one? Okay, let's go back into networking. Let's go back to reserved IPs. Okay, it's there. Yeah, two, four. That's weird. Hmm. Okay, so maybe it... Let's go back to tutorials. Yeah, that's strange. Hmm, that is very strange. I'm not sure why that is doing that. There we go. Okay, good. so it's showing up here, but usually it actually shows up just on the main listing. Hmm. Okay, but anyway, that reserved IP address has been assigned, and now let's do what, we, what I'm calling the hot swap. So what we need to do actually is go to this droplet here. This is the one that we want to upgrade, right, to resize again. We're going to take a live snapshot of it. And let me pause the video while I wait for this snapshot to complete. And just a little note here, if this was a real web application, you would need to, you know, put some kind of banner in your application to indicate to users that while, so while we're doing this snapshot, right, any data that they try to save is not going to be, after the snapshot's created, it's not going to be copied over, right? It's going to have no knowledge of it. Now, there are some you know, more complex ways around this, but that is usually the simplest approach. Just schedule you know, some, a maintenance window and let your users know, hey, during this maintenance window, do not save anything to the DB or it may not be saved. That droplet or that snapshot has been created. Now what we're going to do is click on it. We're going to say create droplet. We're going to create a new droplet from this snapshot. So let's start doing that. It's already got the snapshot selected here. So notice, of course, we don't need to select an OS. It's already, you know, it's already got the one that's in the snapshot. Um, here's where we're going to select something. We're going to choose this one with uh, four gigabytes. It's $32 a month. Uh, we're going to do the automated backups again. We might as well. Perfect. I'm going to delete this anyway. Uh, we're going to add this exact same SSH key, although interestingly, I don't think this actually works when you're creating from a snapshot. It will not inject this SSH key. Um, we're just going to call it DO Tutorial 3, the host name, and the project tutorials is correct. Now I will click Create Droplet. Usually it shows up right away or you see like a progress bar weird maybe they're having some issues today okay and so who knows there must be something weird going on with uh, digital ocean because these were usually these show up and you can see them in progress kind of being created but this time that didn't happen and now as you can see i've got six of these in here but I can go ahead and show you what we would do next. So the next thing you would do is just literally, once you verify that this machine is ready to go, this new production machine that's been upgraded, you could just swap out this uh, reserved IP here. So we can go into this. I believe we can access the reserved IP address from here. View all. And then we will see them in here. And we can just go to this one. This is the one. And instead, of, we can do reassign. And we will assign it to DO Tutorial 6, re reassign reserved IP, and then we are good to go. So 
the users would notice almost nothing, right? Or they would notice nothing actually, except that if they'd saved anything during the time between when the snapshot was being created and this new machine launched and switched over, none of those changes would be saved. So you need to alert your users beforehand before you attempt to do this. So this is an easy way to kind of do this, upgrade a, upgrade a droplet without any kind of real downtime. So that should be it for this tutorial. Now I'm gonna go and delete these you know, other machines that I've created by accident. You guys let me know in the comments if you have any questions on this or if you know a better approach to doing these kinds of things. Thank you so much and have a great day.